What's up, folks? Maximilian here, and I wanted to talk about something regarding a game that's near and dear to my heart. It's the Resurrection of the Killer Instinct series. We all know about it. I've covered plenty of it on my channel, and I kind of want to discuss how this game has evolved. When it comes to fighting games, things get broken really fast sometimes. Most of the time, the vanilla version or the original version of fighting games end up having some pretty crazy things wrong with them. Things are discovered really fast, they gotta get patched, and the additional versions come out quickly thereafter. And luckily, Killer Instinct, for the most part, has not had that much crazy stuff about it. There's been some insane things with Sadira, there's been some interesting unblockables, but the funny thing is, is that even though you have an unblockable, you still have a combo-breaking situation. You can't rely on that working every single time, because you can kind of get out of it with proper reads. What I'm getting to is that the high end of Killer Instinct has dramatically changed over the past few months, and I really noticed this when I was at SoCal Regionals. I'm kind of going through a character crisis right now. Uh, many of you guys have noticed between my Killer Instinct videos, I made it a point that I will play a majority of characters for this channel, that I would actually understand how to use everyone competently, so we'd have a nice variety of videos instead of me consistently playing Ken, you know, or consistently playing Jago or one character the entire time. And I'm very happy with how things have gone, it's just made it difficult to keep up with the folks that are very good and excel with one character, because I can kind of play them all, but not amazingly. And I really noticed this at SoCal Regionals. Um, I did compete, I was lucky enough to get top 8 at that tournament, but the things I was noticing down the line were starting to resemble another fighting game that I did play competitively for quite some time, and I did like a lot way back in the day, and I guess it kind of makes sense, but it's Street Fighter 4. Street Fighter 4 is a game that's extremely dependent of things called footsies, spacing, and character knowledge and matchups. It's critical in those games, and one of the biggest challenges that I have with Street Fighter 4 is that I didn't keep up with the majority of the roster for the longest time, so I have no idea what a lot of these characters can actually do now, and that's one of the most important things, is to understand what the other character is capable of doing. Now, with Killer Instinct, this absolutely applies. Since you only have eight characters, it's not that bad. You don't have to learn that many matchups, and when you have one character that you're, that you're sticking with, it's generally okay. I mean, I kind of know that Saberwolf can do pretty good against Sadira. Um, you have Chief Thunder that does very good against certain characters like Sadira or Glacius, and they kind of have their counterpicks. And that's what I was doing within the tournament, trying to take what these characters are powerful against and then work around them with another character that might have something that, that's really good against them. This is known as counterpicking. But what I did notice is that the folks that were extremely prevalent with one character are doing a lot better than others. If you stick it out with one character and kind of learn the bad matchups, it seems to go very well in your favor. Sadira specialists, we had Orchid specialists, we had like, guys that were using Glacius, as well as a Jago that won SoCal Regionals. And even more recently, PR Balrog won a big tournament in Texas Showdown with Orchid, so... It's interesting how that's kind of evolved in that way instead of a counterpicking game, you stick with your guns. Although it's only a few months old. The other thing I have noticed is that the gameplay style is also really like Street Fighter 4. Not just the, uh, the, the counterpicking mentality and learning matchups, it's also really involved into this game that requires you to be extremely, extremely delicate with spacing and footsies, and I used that term before. Footsies is understanding the space of which your attacks are effective, and the space of which your enemies or attacks are effective, and counter-attacking. If someone's constantly doing this one move from this one distance, like a sweep, well, you're gonna throw out a move that will punish that sweep, that'll actually make them realize, ooh, I can't be doing this anymore from this range. Uh, that's actually footsies, is controlling space, and eventually putting things into your advantage through the use of special moves and normal attacks. And this has become really prevalent in Killer Instinct. Spacing and footsies are huge in this game now, probably even more so than some other big-name Street Fighter titles. It's the most, most, most prevalent in Street Fighter 4, because that's kind of what the core of the game is built upon. So, the thing is, if you want to be a footsie character and you want to use characters that control space, there are a few examples in the game that really take advantage of this, and number one is Chief Thunder. Why is Chief Thunder so good at controlling space? Well, literally, he has a 30% damaging attack that is uncombo breakable. That Shadow Command Grab is ridiculous, and that's pretty much usable in footsie space range, where normals are pretty good and you have to kind of counter-attack with certain normal attacks. That move is amazing, because it kind of negates all of it, it happens extremely fast, and you have to be jumping already to get out of it. Saberwolf is another amazing character for this, because Saberwolf has very good normal attacks, and that back heavy punch, that overpowered move, is also fantastic. Not to mention he has the best anti-air in the game. And then, of course, the master spacing footsie dude of all is Jago, a very similar Shoto-style character to the Street Fighter game, so it makes sense that he is very spacing-dependent, and if you have a knowledge of footsies and would like to take advantage of, like, I'm gonna punish 
punish them with this low forward and go to a combo, you're gonna do very well. Because as Killer Instinct grows now, it's not about specifically how I can make them really think about like what auto double this is or what they're doing because most people can see the majority of auto doubles now. You can definitely see heavies, you can almost see mediums every single time, and some people can even see lights on reaction. So what you need to do is manuals, and as a process of this, if people are doing manuals, you essentially have to guess a lot of the time, either guess on the linkers or guess on the manual in order to actually get a combo breaker. Because if you guess wrong, that means that they're getting a full damage manual combo, which can be upwards of 40 to 60 percent. What's crazy about this is that this is also kind of even more dangerous than a game like Street Fighter. You miss a certain opportunity in Street Fighter against some characters and you might lose like 10 to 20 percent health. But in Killer Instinct, you potentially could lose like 30 to 50 percent. It's just crazy how insane it can get. If you're not a footsie guy, which I'm kind of not as well, I kind of like being extremely offensive in some situations, and being offensive with footsies takes a real, real high level of understanding of how fighting games work in higher level competition, which I don't have that much experience in. But there are other characters that you guys can possibly use that kind of avoid this. Number one is definitely Glacius. Glacius is a zoner, he keeps you out from distance, and he doesn't really have that many footsies for the most part. He commands space because of his long range attacks. Another character is Sadira. Sadira has air footsies. I guess you could say, but she controls the airspace and is very annoying to hit sometimes. As well as Spinal. Uh, Spinal has some pretty cool attacks similar to Jago, but he's really about manipulating your opponent, so I think that that's kind of a totally different story. Orchid is another one that's actually extremely footsie oriented, right next to Chief Thunder, Jago, and Saber Wolf. So you got half the cast that can kind of play this Street Fighter 4-ish game that is very similar to Street Fighter 4, while you got the other half of the cast that can kind of play a fighting game much differently, and each one of those characters between Glacius, Sadira, and Spinal, they can play the game a lot differently than anyone else. This is the kind of the crazy thing that's been happening with Killer Instinct at higher levels. It's really about, I'm gonna get that hit and I'm gonna get all this damage because you're not even gonna be able to react to what I'm going to do in this combo because it's only gonna have manuals. And that gets pretty scary, so Killer Instinct, I've like had this moment where I gotta reevaluate how I play this game because it's becoming very difficult at high levels and the guys that are playing it are taking it into a direction that's very similar to a game I'm just notably terrible at, which is something like Street Fighter 4. Either way, let me know what you guys think about higher level Killer Instinct. Have you been watching it in tournaments between like the bigger, the bigger majority tournaments or really high level players like Grimms and Kowalski and guys like that going at it online? Do you think that the game is evolving somewhat into Street Fighter 4 or do you think it's something totally different because you have the combo breaker and counter breaker mechanic? Leave a comment below what you think or you can contact me on Twitter or Facebook. Twitter's at Maximilian underscore and you can also find me on Facebook at Maximilian Dude. Take care folks and I'll see you next time.